Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about, yesterday we talked about rational exponents and roots, right? Nth roots. Today we're going to talk about properties of those rational exponents as well as properties of those roots. Exponents. <laughs> now, when we talk about the properties of the exponent, I'm not going to list out every single one for you again. If you rewind back to chapter two, remember chapter two we talked about properties of exponents? Where um, if you were multiplying and the base was the same, what did you do with the exponents? You added them. Well, now we're going to be doing the same thing, but now we have fractions. Yes? Oh. So now what I'm going to have to do is add the fractions, get the same denominator. Common denominator would be what? 10, so this by 5. This by two. Yep, you gotta find a common denominator. Okay. No, 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 no. You multiply the top and the bottom by what you need to get your common denominator. Ten. And so this needs this one needs a five, this first one, and this the second one needs a two. Okay, so I get 7 tenths, so this would be x to the 7 tenths, okay? So all those properties we learned about before are going to come back to play, only this time I'm talking about fractions, okay? So just as a reminder, remember when you add or subtract fractions, fractions, we need a common denominator. And then what do you do once the denominator is the same? Add the tops, combine the tops. So we combine the numerators. Keep that same denominator. Difference is when we multiply, because remember when you raise a power up to another power, we're multiplying. How do you multiply fractions? Straight across. Top times top and bottom times bottom. I just want a reminder, a refresher, as you go through these properties. I'll pause. All right. Here's th something to keep in mind because I'm going to give you several examples. Well, actually, let me show you first. Let's say we had 7 to the 1 fourth times 7 to the 1 half. Okay, this time my base is not a variable, but it's a number. So what happens? Do you? Do you? It stays the same. Just like the x stayed the same, it stays the same. The base stays, you add the exponents. We are. When you multiply something that has the same base, so the base... stays the same. But the base is the whole Correct. What if it was six to the one half times seven to the one half? You can do something here at this time. Think about it. Catherine said it. This time, notice what's the same. This time the exponents are the same. Remember those properties of exponents we talked about? Could I rewrite this like that? No. It's kind of the backwards of the distributing the exponent that we did. So then I could combine the base here with the same exponent? So you could just multiply 6 times Yes, seven. yes it is. I wanted you to see why. Okay, so here's going to be my helpful hint to you as we go through some of these. 
This only works when you're multiplying or dividing. When multiplying. Don't try to do this when you're adding or subtracting. If the bases are the same, combine the exponents. But if the exponents are the same, what do you think you do? Combine the bases. What are both of them say? Pick one, you can't combine both. It's a good question. Combine. Let's do a couple examples. Look at it and tell me what to do. What can I do? Look at what's inside the parentheses. Are the bases the same? No. Are the exponents the same? No. How about that exponent outside? Can I do anything with it? Yes. What? Distribute it. The only reason I can distribute it is because I'm multiplying inside here, not adding or subtracting. Okay. So three times a third. One. One. Seven times, or one fourth times three. Can I combine the five and the seven now? No. No. Are the exponents the same? No. Then I cannot combine them. So that's it? So that's it. Circle it. Circle it. Circle it. What, circle it? What thing? What do you mean our thing? Sure, Tanner. <laughs> That'll be our thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love you, though. All right. What can I do? Do you combine the bases or do you combine the exponents? Exponents, because the bases are the same. That means I combine the exponents. Three fourths plus one half is five fourths. Five fourths. Leave the base alone. Is this making sense? Circle. <laughs> Let me circle it. Um, how about this one? Stop right there. Stop right. You can come. You can subtract them. Subtract. I can divide the bases. If you look inside the parentheses. The exponents are the same. Four to the one half. You could distribute first if you wanted to. Ooh, what is four to the one half? Good job. Why, Tanner? No. Why? The square root of four is two. I know. I know you were. I know. I wouldn't have said no like that if I thought you were serious and, and embarrassed you. Two to the third is eight. Is this making sense to you? Pretty easy? I just called a little bit. No, but you thought it was going to be more. More of these? I want to do more dividing. Can we do one by ourselves? Okay. You know, this isn't the whole lesson. Y'all know that, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah, it is. Come on. I said it was it was properties of rational exponents and radicals. The bases are not the same. There you go. Try it. One of one of them will always be the same. For the rest of the day. What? One of them will always be the same. The base for the x one is one of them will always be the same. Not always. If they're not, you can't do anything. I'm oh. Okay. About. If one third and one third wasn't the same, do you still divide? Nope. Oh, no. They must be the same to combine. Yes. Do you have to put the exponent? No. You could either work from the inside out or the outside in. This is not like normal order of operations where you have to do something first. As long as you use legitimate properties of exponents each time.
Did you get it? No. Yes. Good job. That's not going to keep you warm. 42 divided by 6 is 7. Yes? All right. Let's talk about the radicals. Circle it. Oh, my Lord. Let's go back. Circle it. Say it again. Circle. Circle? circle? <laughs> I thought you said square. Oh, I'm going to triangle. See that joke that I made? Yes. Yeah. Um, let's do the radicals. Now, we've already done radicals one time, but we didn't do anything other than square roots. Okay? So, remember... The properties are the same. It's just going to get a little funky because it's nth roots. <laughs> Remember that I can split them up. And I can go forwards or backwards with that. And same if I'm dividing. Do you remember when we did this a lot? When we were splitting up those radicals, yeah. uh, breaking them down, so we're going to do the same thing for um, roots now. Why do you have to divide it? No, I'm saying if you are dividing under the same radical, you can oh. split it up. I'm just like... No, yeah. Why did you just start one of them? That's not the answer. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Okay. Apologies. I was referencing that when she asked a question. Oh, Tanner. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> All right. We'll show you what I'm talking about because I think the easiest way to do this is just to show you an example. That's right. Sunburnt and suntan. All right. If you look here and I'm multiplying, again, remember radicals are just roots. Okay, I mean, radicals, I'm sorry. Radicals and roots are just exponents written a different way. Okay, so properties of exponents are the same for properties of radicals. All right, so here, if I wanted to simplify this, the root is the same. So I'm going to combine them under the same root. What's 12 times 18? Um, 180 plus 36. What is it? 290. Two, what is it? 216. That's right. So now what I want to do is 216 a perfect third root. Is it? I don't know. Is it? Six? It's six. Okay. Correct. Oh. How about this one? That just helps me know I'm finished. Yeah. Simplify it. Um, 80 divided by 5. Which is? 16. I ain't lying. This kid just talked so fast. I said, I'm talking. Two. Sorry, Phil. No. Because we're not done. Oh. You said two. Good job, Maxie. Good oh. job. Uh, you have to square it. Why got to be part of the Circle it, Tanner. Circle it. Circle it. <laughs> All right. What if... What if... What if I asked you to simplify that? Uh-huh. I would say. Um, you have to bring what, it out. What is the third or one third time? You do. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. 
you look at this and you want to break it down, you want to say, is there a perfect power of this root that I can divide it by? What? That's a square, not a cube. So 2 to the third is 8. 3 to the third is 27. 4 to the third is 64. 5 to the third is 125. Can I divide 135 by any of these numbers? Which one? 27 times what? So 5. The cube root of 27 is? What? Guess what, Tanner? Circle it. Wait, how, how did you get 3? The cube root of 27, 3 to the third is 27. So how would you I have to show you addition and subtraction, but after that. Just like when we were doing square roots, because this is multiplied. So uh, the cube root of 27 is 3. But the cube root of 5 doesn't break down. Where did that big 3 come That's what I just talked about. The cube root of 27 is 3. Oh. All right. What if What if you had to also multiply inside one of those? Inside of the three. Say that again. Like four. Mm -hmm. times three square root of Cynthia or something over another number. You would work on simplifying each one individually and then put them together. I'm almost done, promise. I want you to think about something with me for a minute. Can you do anything with those two the way they sit right now? You can put them into equation together. Five. 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 Remember what I told you? The rules only work with multiplication and division. Oh, yeah. Wait, couldn't you undo three, third, three, 52 minus two? Not 52. 54, sorry. Not 54. <laughs> But you're thinking along the right lines. Let's see if we can break this 54 down in. Is there a perfect third that goes into 54? 27. No. 27 times 2. Don't worry, Grant. They're just haters. Do we agree? Which means that this would be 3. I'm fixing to show you. The cube root of 54 is the same thing as 3 times the cube root of 2, do you agree? Minus the cube root of 2. Now I want you to think about something with me for just a minute. No, it's not supposed to. 27 times 2 equals 54. Like, is it just, would you always divide it by 2 to try and get an answer? No, you would divide it by 8 or 27 or 64. These are the numbers you try to divide it by. Mm -hmm. If it's whatever that root is. If this was a fourth root, then I'd be dividing it by powers of 4. Okay. Think about something with me for a minute. Do you agree I could put a little imaginary one here being multiplied there? Thank you. No, wouldn't that just be two times this? It would be. It would be. These are what we call like radicals. Think about like terms, okay? If you had 3x minus 1x, what would you have? 2. 2x, right? Well, my x is just the cube root of 2. 
So as long as the radical, well, actually, let me say, as long as the root and the number under there is the same, then we're like radicals, and we can combine them. So just like 3x minus 1x is 2x, this becomes 2. Sorry. So you would always just um, subtract the outside. That's what I'm saying. Dang. 